Oh, analog sticks, how I hate you. I hate you so much I'll be spending the next couple of days trying to emulate you. This video is for that one guy out there that would rather use an analog stick over a mouse. Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! Alright, now that I've successfully shown my disdain for analog sticks, let's talk about my findings revolving around them. To recap from the FPS video, we used a mouse input for the right pad with trackball mode, messed around with edge spin, and even shot some dudes in the face with gyro aiming. Fun stuff. So what does this mean for analog based games? What settings are we going to want to use for games that actually play better with an analog stick? Do we want an aggressive ramp up from 0 to 100% output? Or do we want a little more control for our joystick judo? In short, it's all about what game you're trying to play, and what you prefer to use. Okay, so in Rocket League, for example, what use does the right analog stick serve? Nothing is the right answer, as hopefully you're using Y to track the ball, and not just aimlessly driving around in circles while Kronobi's doing wall-to-wall -wall aerials over your head. Okay, but seriously, there are two scenarios in which the right analog stick needs to be used. Searching for power-ups, and clicking it to find out what's behind you. Clicking in the right stick is enabled by default, so we'll leave that be. But what's the difference between joystick move and joystick camera? Does it matter which one you choose? Short answer, yes, and kind of a longer answer, I don't know. There is some bug I'm experiencing with the latest beta build where changes made in the overlay aren't reflected when returning to the game. The only way for these changes to take effect is by closing the game, then restarting it. However, here are a couple observations I made from before I started experiencing this bug. This should be taken with an atom-sized grain of salt, as I'm sure this info will be outdated tomorrow, or whenever that is in Valve time. When I wanted to control a camera without needing to start in the center of the pad, I would choose joystick move, regardless of if I was using it to control the camera or my character. In the advanced page, we get the juicy stuff like stick response curve and adaptive centering. Now, response curve should be the same in joystick camera as it is in joystick move, but adaptive centering exists only while in the advanced settings under joystick move. Adaptive centering also appears to be bugged, but the promise of this premise is that the first touched position on the pad is treated as the new center of the joystick. This is to prevent awkward or accidental movements when touching the pad. I think this will be a handy setting if or when it starts to work, but for the time being I have this set to off. The stick response curve seems to be working better than the other options, although the time it takes to reboot a game just to see my changes doesn't give me an adequate impression on the differences between linear, aggressive, or wide. Judging by the explanation box up above, linear treats the right pad in a way you think about your traditional analog stick. Starting in the center, the input ramps up the closer you get to the edge of the pad until we reach 100% output. Aggressive causes us to reach that 100% output faster than relaxed, and wide and extra wide seem to have a bigger radius where values less than 100% are given. Joystick camera gives us the option to set a swipe duration and a smooth option under advanced settings. Swipe duration is used to simulate a flick of a real joystick, although I haven't played around with this too much yet. Smoothing is supposed to return the stick to the neutral position slower, as if it was driven by a physical spring. Are you still with me? No? Good. Because I'm lost on some of this too. Dead zone shape seems to have an effect on our settings and stick response curve, but again it's hard to tell the difference between the dead zones when you have to wait a minute or two to get back into testing again. The bit of joystick emulation I did try when things were working more consistently led me to believe that a circle shaped dead zone allowed me to hit those non-cardinal directions with more success. I guess your mileage will vary with some of these settings. The inner and outer dead zones play off of the response curve, but I'll need to do more research on these before I give my two cents. If anyone else is experiencing similar issues with these bugs, let me know. And feel free to point me to a subreddit or thread or something where this is being discussed. I'd love to read more about this stuff. Okay, so back to games. I'm finding myself using an aggressive stick response curve more often than linear, as I can tap on the outer edges of the pad and still have that register as an input. Whether or not this has to do with using joystick move instead of camera is anyone's guess but I suppose you'll be safe by mimicking what I've been doing. So basically, if we have an over-the-shoulder game where we can get away with a relaxed camera and don't need to rely on precision aiming, use joystick camera. Also pro tip, use this in combination with gyro. If we need to quickly pan our camera and hit that 100% output swiftly, use an aggressive stick response curve. If we're controlling a character in a top-down view, use joystick move, then choose aggressive for stick response curve. In general, I'd recommend you try some different community configurations if you're stuck. The tough part about owning this controller is finding a setting that works for that one genre that you're playing for the first time. Once you know what you like in Batman, you'll know what to use in Assassin's Creed. 
and it'd only take two minutes to set up.